As you've had a chance to move past Boston and look ahead to, to Clemson, what's been your, your kind of takeaway from that game and the message to the guys? Well, I don't, I don't think we came out with the energy level and the focus that we needed to uh, to start the game, in particular the first probably 15 minutes of the game, certainly not to take anything away from Boston, you know, because they're a team that on offense, if, if you don't guard them, they'll make you pay. I mean, they, they shoot the ball very similar percentages and bulk them out as Michigan does. And we know that uh, from playing them twice how dangerous they can be from the three-point line. So. But I just didn't think we had enough uh, competitive toughness. I didn't like our energy level. I didn't like our focus. I thought a key juncture in the game, which wasn't talked about much after the game, really by me or the media watching it now after the fact, is the last four minutes of the first half that took it from 17 to 9. That was big. Um, so I thought that we responded pretty well there and at least gave ourselves or put ourselves in position where we had an opportunity to make a few plays in the second half. You know, fortunately, our, our energy and our, our focus, I thought, was much better in the second half. And uh, we were able to make some plays, you know, down the stretch. But, you know, I think the message is you have to be ready, you know. Um, you have to be ready to play a 40-minute basketball game in, in any postseason tournament. I think the NCAA tournament shows that today. You know, and yesterday, the NIT tournament shows that. If you're not ready to play, it's a one-game deal. And uh, there are a lot of good players, a lot of good coaches, a lot of different styles. And if you're not ready, then it can be, you know, it, it, can, it can put you in a position where you don't have a chance to get the result that you want. So, you know, I think our guys have learned that throughout the year. And, uh, you know, that was another moment, I thought, the other night where we had a chance to teach them a little bit. Stats-wise, Clemson looks a lot like you guys. They do. Yeah, we've talked about that a lot. I told our guys, uh, you know, from an uh, offensive perspective as well as defensive perspective, very similar. Uh, they're really, really good defensively, long, they block shots, they guard the ball well, they rotate well, uh, they challenge shots well, they rebound well. You know, I, I think on that end of the court, you know, obviously you looked at the statistics, I mean, they're one of the best teams in the country on the defensive end of the floor. You know, so we're going to have, a, you know, that's going to be a challenge. We've got to do a great job, I think, of moving the basketball, moving bodies, because uh, they really load it up against you. Uh, a little bit like we do. So, you know, we, we've got to do a good job of executing offensively. Both I mean, this shapes up as a big ten game. I mean, yeah, in some respects, yeah. You know, obviously, Brad, I got a great uh, deal of respect for Brad. I've known him for some time. I coached against him when I was at Ohio. Uh, I've always watched his teams from afar, even when he was at UNC Wilmington. You know, Brad is from the Midwest as well, uh, Evansville native. And uh, blue collar guy, his teams play that way. They play with a lot of physicality, a lot of toughness. Um, they take on his disposition for sure. And uh, you know, they, they, they've had a, I think this is only the fourth time maybe in program history, you'd have to ask DB, that's totally accurate, where they've won 10 or more ACC games. You know, they made the tournament, I believe, in his first year with 22 wins. He's done a really good job. Uh, I have an appreciation for the job he's doing there because I was at NC State 96 through 2000. And, and um, you know, I, I think he's done a great job. So it's going to be a, a great challenge, certainly. Both Ray and Tracy, to a greater extent, have had trouble this year when they try to do too much driving against <coughs> shot blockers and pack defenses. Uh, so how do you overcome? Well, I mean, they have. I think it's a great point, Rob. I thought early on especially, um, as we started to play in Big Ten play, I think they've adapted a little bit. Um, they've gotten a lot better at it. But you're right. I think playing off penetration is really what you're talking about there. When you play against teams that block shots at the level that Clemson does, you have to be willing passers. And you have to read situations well. You get in the paint. You've got to decide whether you've got an angle and an opportunity to score or, or whether or not you've got a pass. You know, and, and those guys, I think, have gotten better at that. But, you know, I would agree with that. There's been times, especially early, where, you know, maybe we didn't make the greatest decisions there once we got in there. So I, I think Ray and Tracy have learned and gotten better. Talk a little bit about K.J. Daniels. Does he remind you of anybody that you've seen? You know, he's a he's – a, uh, we haven't played against a lot of guys like K.J. McDaniels. We haven't. Uh, in that he has great size at the three, he has a post-up game at the three, dribble drive game, obviously he's capable of making shots, he gets to the free throw line, he's as good a shot blocker as we'll play against all year, and normally when you hear shot blocking you think of fours and fives, he's a three that plays some four occasionally, but he's a pogo stick, he's athletic, he's got great length, you know, I think he's a mismatch problem for a lot of, a lot of teams watching him on, uh, on film, he's certainly concerned.
Kendrick the other night. It's just an off night. He was kind of due for one. But yeah, Kendrick season. wasn't real good the other night. He knows that. I mean, uh, he wasn't as good as certainly we've been accustomed to here lately. Um, fortunately, you know, some other guys, I thought our seniors off the bench really did a great job uh, of making some plays for us. But, you know, I fully anticipate him, uh, him bouncing back. Uh, every game at this point is a learning experience for him. That was his first season four postseason game, you know, in an Illinois uniform. And, you know, I'm sure he would tell you he hopes to have plenty more uh, postseason games in his career. And hopefully he can learn from that and be a little bit better on Sunday. Ray played a little football in the earlier life. Uh, does he bring a little of that to the basketball court too that he likes contact? I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't try to avoid it. Yeah, we've got a lot of guys that are seekers, you know, which is good. I like to coach seekers. You know, I think Morgan's a seeker, Egwood's a seeker, you know, Hill's a seeker for sure, Nunn's a seeker, Ray's a seeker. You know, does that attribute in, in uh, part to playing football? I'm, I'm sure it does. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's obviously got a physically strong, explosive, athletic body and uh, utilizes it well. One more thing about Brad Brownell. When he was at Wright State, do you often find yourself competing for recruits, uh, covering the same territory? Yeah, occasionally, uh, Rob. Uh, occasionally, not not a ton, but occasionally. And uh, you know, we run we run into each other over the years, not only recruiting, but in some clinic situations that we've been in, um, uh, where I've had a chance to you know listen to him and, and uh, learn a thing or two from Brad. Brad's very sharp. Is there any challenge of playing at 10 in the morning? I mean, Sure, there's always challenges, I think, for either team, though. But, um, you know, we, fortunately for us, we played a couple 12 noon Eastern time games uh, in Indianapolis, which was 11 our time, which, if you think about it, Tup was fairly close to the clock change date. So it was really a 10 a.m., 11 a.m. feel for our guys. So hopefully that, that helps us in, in uh, preparation for Sunday. Thanks, guys.